What did you? To simplify this a bit. Distribute, yeah, distribute. Right. So then you get 16 over n minus 16i over n squared. Right. Stop there for a second. Now look what this says. It says sum up the difference of these two. The summation symbol is something known as linear. It will look like it distributes. If I wanted to balance my checkbook, which I have no idea if anybody does anymore. If you wanted to balance your checkbook, you could take all the, you could just add up 80 minus 20 minus 70 plus 30. So all the pluses are when you put money in, all the negatives are when you, or you could take all the positives, add them up, and subtract all the ones that are negative, right? Because summation can be done in any order you want it to be. If everything's adding, then what the shit? So this becomes just break them up. Bam. It's like adding up all the positives, all the deposits, minus all the withdrawals. Is everybody cool with that? That's all I did. It doesn't actually distribute. It's not this times this, but we call it a linear operator because it looks like it distributes. Look what I can do here. So for this guy right there, what can I factor out? I can actually, what can I take out in front of the summation symbol? Anything that doesn't have an I in it, because that's the only variable it sees. So I can actually take 16 over n out. Can anybody tell me? What's the sum? If you add 1 up n times, if you add 1 up n times, what do you get? No, not multiply. If you add 1 up n times, add 1 up 3 times, what do you get? 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3. Add 1 up 8 times, 8. Add 1 up n times. Is everybody, if I say that, does everybody see how the symbol means that? Add 1 up n times, I get n. I love it. So in the next step, I know i got more shit to do this way, but let's just take care of this really easy little piece here. So I get 16 over n times n. That looks nice. Those n's cancel. That's always nice. Now let's keep going over here. Minus, what can I factor out of this guy? What comes out of him? N squared and 16, right? Because I can, and anything that has an I has to stay. Well, the I has an I, it's got to stay. Minus 16 over N squared, sum of I equals 1 to N. I. Now, does anybody remember, this is we're going to bring back up something we talked about the other day. Didn't we talk about this piece? And you're like, maybe we did. I don't know, man. We talked about a lot of shit. All right. So let me write this back up here and then remind you what we came up with yesterday. Actually, we just borrowed what Gauss did when he was a little kid. A little show off. So what do we got here? We got in the front we got 16. Is that cool? The n's cancel. Yeah. Minus 16 over n squared. Uh, sum. So what we did the other day with this, the sum i equals 1 to n of i. Yesterday, or not yesterday, but yesterday in terms of the class. We figured it out. It was this. So 
So you have n over two pairs of one plus n. Remember, that's what Gal stated, kind of like put the first two together on the extremes, and then he had the next two, and then he had the next two. You guys remember that? We did that. Okay. So right there, and this is why you're going to have to know what this one is, and this is why you're going to have to know what this one is, and I'm going to tell you what they are. I even have a sheet of a proof that you can pick up if you want to. If you don't ever want to see it, then you don't have to come get it. But I'm going to put them up, and i got the proofs here. Um, 16 minus 16 over n squared times n times n plus 1 over 2. Pretty much every function you have to do this to, the type of things we're doing right now is going to happen to you. So basically, this format is going to happen. What's going to happen? This is going to make it worse. They're going to give you a function that's worse than what, what we're working with. We're going to be with a linear function. Holy shit. But the steps aren't going to change. So what do I get here? Now I'm doing this limit. What's the limit as n goes to infinity of 16? What does 16 do as n goes to infinity? Does 16 give a shit about n? No. So as n goes to infinity, 16 is like, I'm 16. I don't know what you want. So 16. What happens here? And the more you remember your pre-calc, the easier this step is going to be. What's the degree of the top? Second degree. What's the degree of the bottom? Second degree, right? So what is the limit as n goes to infinity if the degrees are the same? Okay, well, shit. Um, here, let me see. Somebody got all this stuff here? Or somebody with all this stuff here? Okay. So when you're dealing with limits, it's a really good idea to remember the shortcuts that you should have now. So the limit as, let's just say, x goes to infinity of 1 over x is 0, right? So if the bottom degree is higher, it goes to 0. If the top degree is higher, it goes to infinity. Yeah. And if the degrees match, let me just make it very ax to the n plus blah, 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 over bx to the n plus blah, blah, blah. The shortcut that we know from pre-calculus is it's the ratio of the coefficients of the highest degree terms. You divide by the highest degree, you do all that little shit, all the little pieces go to zero. Does this sound at all familiar? Even if not, that's just what it is. I want you to realize that's always going to happen in these things, which is really, really, really cool. Um, so what happens right here, these, these go to 1. Because it's n squared plus shit over n squared. Degrees are the same. Ratio of the coefficients is 1. So the limit of this whole thing is 1. So what are you left with? 8. And what's 16 minus 8? Is that what we got earlier? Just doing geometry. Yes. So too bad if you're rooting for this to not work so we could forget about the next part of the calculus class. It worked. Of course it did. So that, one thing I like about that example is it really hammers home that that's all integrals are doing is finding areas between the x-axis and the function. If it's a geometric shape I know, I don't need calculus, but calculus would still work. So when do I need calculus? When I have a funky-ass, twisty side. I don't know what the area is of this. Do I have an area formula from geometry for that? No, shit, no. And the calculus says, I got this shit. Just do this. Okay. So right now, just to make an analogy, right now, we are in the section where we're doing things the long way. The same way when we did limit definition of derivative. Remember that? 
limit definition derivatives. And then we learned the shortcuts and we said, screw you, limit definition derivative. We know the shortcuts. So right now we got the limit definition of the integral. That's the next key word. This is the limit definition of the integral, and then we have to learn the shortcuts. We're not to the shortcuts yet, so don't use any if you know them. Okay, maybe, maybe. So I want you guys, well, let's see. Look this one over here. Here's an example of one that's a little tiny bit worse. But you see how the steps are all the same? Of course they are. The steps are the same. I still have to start with finding the width and a, an expression for xi. So the width is 3 over n. I start at 2, so the xi is going to be 2 plus each step, so plus i times 3 over n. I keep adding another step. f of xi, I just plug that stuff in. So I just plug that in, and I get this, and then I just put everything together. So the steps don't change. If I don't start at zero, this is going to look a little bit worse. That looked really nice because I started at zero. Right? The function on this one is still nice, still just linear. You put it all together. You see this step here is where you distribute that. Break these up. Then I can factor out. I left the 24 in there just because. This is where I use this fact right here. Pop! And on one level, this makes, well, this makes sense on a lot of levels. But on one level especially, it makes sense because I need everything to be in terms of n. So then I can apply that limit. Now, real quick, geometrically, what does this shape look like? Can you guys take a minute and just graph this shape across this region? What shape have you created? What shape is that? What shape is that? Look at it like this. Yeah. Hmm? Nope, can't be. Parallelogram means all sides to be parallel to the opposite side. Trapezoid. I like it. Trapezoid's like a parallelogram that kind of fell over. Okay. Everybody's right? Ah, oh, shit. Um, this is, these are the basis. I don't know if you guys remember. If I have a, pair, a, a trapezoid, if I had a real trapezoid, oh, um, I always look at it like this. It's like a beheaded triangle, right? You chop the head of this triangle off. So the formula should look like the area of a triangle formula, but it's going to have, how many bases does this sucker have? Two. So it's one half the height times the sum of the bases. So that's basically the, air, the triangle area formula, but with a couple bases, because it's got a couple bases. Now some people look at that and they say, well, that's bigger than the area. The triangle would have been, you cut the head off. When it cut the head off, it made it not as tall. So no, you're right. I don't know. Have you ever heard it explained like that? Probably not. Most teachers probably aren't beheading triangles. So what are the bases here? What's this? Oh, how, how tall is this? What's eight? And how tall is that? Twenty. Right? And how 
what's the real height, because this thing is on its side, right? What's the height? Three. So this is B1, B2. So if I do one half the height times the sum of the bases, I get 28 divided by 2 is 14 times 3 is 42. The answer to everything is 42. Same answer there, right? So again, the shape that came out of this problem was a geometric shape. I know the formula for it should match up with what calculus does because that's what calculus is doing. So when am I going to get... So in this problem, you'll notice uh, I got summation of I. So why do I have these guys down here? They're going to be for situations like where the function has a squared in it, which is the one I want you to do now. I want you to do this problem on the other side right now. If you want to, you can start with number two. That's what we were just doing. Number one is the old use only four rectangles instead of infinite. You can do that whatever order you want to.